One of the most collectible rifles of World War II these days is the Lee Enfield No. 4T. It really was one of the finest sniper rifles ever produced. At the outset of World War II, the British realized they really needed a better sniper rifle. And so the Royal Small Arms Factory at Enfield started converting those rifles that had come off the factory and been proven to have a really good bore to them. And by 1942, it was determined that they really needed to do a better job. So they went to Birmingham Small Arms and they had two different factories there, one at Maltby, one at Shirley, and they would test these rifles and find the ones that really shot the best groups. And they contracted then with the British firm, well-known firm of Holland and Holland, which was famous world over for making absolutely top quality guns. And this is really the hallmark of the number four T. This gun was really the finest sniping rifle of World War II. And what it did was it took a number four that had been specially selected for accuracy and paired it with a very solid yet removable scope mount and the number 32 telescope. And the British figured out early on that if you want to keep a sniper rifle accurate, you have to keep the pieces together. Not only does it have to be built right of the highest quality components available at the time, but you have to keep the rifle and the scope together. And so they did. They would actually uh, take the serial number of the scope, put it on the rifle, so that if they were separated, you could rejoin them, which uh, frankly didn't happen often in the surplus market of the 1960s. Sometimes you just got whatever scope was on there. Major Jim Land, I uh, had a conversation with him once about sniper rifles, and he made a very interesting remark, uh, which I'll never forget, that uh, the, the greatest virtue that a sniper rifle can have is ruggedness. It's got to hold its zero, because uh, if you give them if you give the snipers a delicate rifle, they'll break it. He pointed out that Carlos Hathcock's uh, sniper rifle was not an especially accurate rifle. It would, he'd been, been lucky to hold uh, uh, two minutes of angle with it. But it held its zero under the harshest kinds of conditions from day one through day two through the end of the week and the following month. I translate that to the virtue of the number 4T, because the number 4T was so strong, so sturdy, and so rugged, and that scope was so big and so awkward that you couldn't hurt it too much. And in combat, uh, the snipers who carried it, they liked it also, and probably for the very same reasons. The machining that went into the scope attachments is incredible. The scopes are, they had a Mark I and a Mark II and a Mark III. Uh, the scopes were made by the absolute top telescopic sites manufacturers in Britain. They added a wooden cheek piece to it, bring the shooter's eye up to the level of the scope. And then the scope itself, once it's fired in with the rifle, it's serial numbered to the rifle. Then the entire package is put into a fairly weighty wooden case, which has all the appendages and all the accessories one could ever need for a sniper rifle. According to all accounts, there were incredibly accurate and sought after throughout wherever the British Army was fighting. Unlike after World War I, uh, the British uh, learned their lesson and they kept number four T's in inventory and they also continued to train snipers. 
and the sniper rifle, really most of the Cold War era, uh, was still uh, the, the number 4T. Uh, that changed in 1970 uh, when the British adopted the L42A1. And what they did was they took existing number 4Ts and they put a heavier, longer barrel on them. They recalibrated the range drum uh, of the number 32 telescope and they fitted it, of course, with a, a, a new box magazine for the rimless 762 cartridge as well as made changes to the bolt face that were necessary to uh, convert a World War II sniping rifle and 303 into a modern 762 sniping rifle. Now, these guns uh, were extremely accurate and actually they're one of the rarer variations of the number four uh, series of rifles because they simply didn't convert that many of them. The number four T has become uh, so popular among collectors and as far as I'm aware, the last complete units with chest, scope, the whole thing uh, that were imported into the United States came in through interarms in the mid-1960s. Uh, they have become uh, so popular with collectors. There are a lot of fakes out there, and anybody who wants to uh, spend uh, four or five thousand dollars for an original number 4T had better take, uh, do his homework and take someone who has, who knows what to look for with him when he goes to buy it. The Lee Enfield number 4T rifle is very desirable to collectors and that means they're often faked. So if you're going to buy one, do your homework. Anyhow, that's all the time that we have for this week. If you like this show and you're not an NRA member, you need to join today. Go to AmericanRifleman.org and sign up. I'm Mark Keefe, and I'll see you next week right here on American Rifleman Television.